handle for myself and abdukul ajisu da'if or miskeen or zalim or jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence alhamdulillah and reach this path of ours to be nothing and Allah inspire within our soul and our heart and our entire wujud and being is the reality of tafakkur and people on social media and internet and tuning in for the first time have to be reminded for myself and for all others. Throughout Qur'an and Majeed Allah gives examples of something and say, none will know it but the people of tafakkur. And before understanding that Allah puts within the heart and soul of these tafakkirun, the people of tafakkur. So Allah first describes in Holy Qur'an that these amazing incidences and say, none will know it, means count yourself out. Don't be angry on social media because you don't understand what they're teaching. Allah already explained, none will know it. It's not something common and it's not for common people. That's why Allah is giving a disclaimer. Yusabi huwa bihamdi, for verily everything praises me but none will know it except the people of tafakkur. So don't be upset because Allah already negated most of creation that you're not going to know it except and Allah's rahmah, except if you take a path of tafakkur. Without the path of tafakkur and contemplation and then go, go now your social media people and you Google, what is tafakkur? What is to stop and to contemplate? And as a result of understanding that because the people whom Allah called to this path, they have that within their being. They understood the world was going too fast, they saw too many people die, too many people get into calamities and difficulties and something Allah put within our souls to slow it down because… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're about to go 100 miles an hour into your grave and those whom Allah calling, their inner calling, something slowed down on them and as a result of slowing down they took everything very slowly and anything that anyone began on their spiritual journey to start to teach and to talk. They were trying to absorb it very slow, very precise, not to pass everything fast because they already did that in dunya. They passed everything fast and for dunya, you know, that, that's going to get you in trouble. But for Allah He doesn't want you coming with your dunya standards into deen in which you read fast and think that you comprehend it. So then those whom were called into the way, they later found out from their shaykhs that this is the way of tafakkur. None will know it, even many who sign up within these Sufi tariqahs, turuqs and the paths of reality, they don't have an inner calling 
And that to understand the way of tafakkur is to stop and contemplate, slow down. If you're taking the way of Allah fast, you're going to miss everything. And Allah gives a warning because you may find yourself to be very great. And Allah then gives an example and a sharat from Sayyidina Musa that he declares, I will not stop until the two rivers meet, to the location of the two rivers meet. And he knew but his companion may not have been told of what was to take place at a rendezvous point. And because of moving fast to the destination, he realizes, I'm hungry, what, what's happening? And that's the whole story of Sayyidina Joshua, said, it was ajeeb, I forgot, shaitan made me to forget to tell you that when we put out the fish for lunch, this dry dead fish, it came alive and jumped into the water. It was ajeeb. And that was the sign that Sayyidina Musa was looking for, pointing out to us, this path is not something visible. Dunya people want a, a physical proof, prove it to me. It's not going to work like that. The proof is in your actions, in the pudding. So they came to Imam Shafi and said, you talk about unseen, prove, prove to us unseen. So he said, bring me some milk and his students brought some milk. So if I tell you in this milk there's cheese, do you deny me? I said, no, what, what, what cheese? He said, but I tell you in this milk there's cottage cheese, there's cheese, there's ice cream, there whatever you can describe that's made from milk. It's in here. <clears throat> Do you see it? They said, no. I said, because it has a process. We're going to spin this, it's going to turn to butter. We're going to do this, it's going to turn to a cheese. We're going to freeze this, become like an ice cream. Everything has a process. If you want things to happen before the process, then you lack faith. And that path is not for you. The way that Allah is giving to us is that you have to slow down. Whatever you did in dunya doesn't work here. That there's not a hustle, it's slow, tedious, continuous. It's a way in which to give your life to the path. Not to take from it, you came to give it and give to it. And as a result your whole life goes slow and everything is about contemplating, meditating and understanding, Ya Rabbi, that make me from these tafakkirun, the people of tafakkur in which none will know except them. I want to know because anyone whom wants knowledge from Allah wants to be from Arafeen, wants some sort of attention from the Divine, this is the greatest attention. Those whom He gave, ilma laduni wa hikmati bi saliheen, they got the greatest gift from Allah They got ilma laduni means that they got heavenly knowledges, heavenly sources that are not on, on uh, books. Preferenced in books but its true reality is the depth behind it is not openly taught by 99% of the places on earth but it's hiddenly taught by 1%. And that Allah will enroll them in these courses. So if you're sitting somewhere and they're not teaching ilm al-laduni, it's not that. As Allah said, the one whom we granted ilm al-laduni wa hikmati bi saliheen. So means Allah going to inspire that like Sayyidina Musa he passed it fast. He remembered the sign that, oh where that fish came to life is where one of Allah's servants are. 
and the quality of that servant, he brings the dead to life. And that's why Allah gave the sharat and example of that fish, that your soul on this earth is a dead fish drying up and nothing is quenching it. The car doesn't quench it, the house doesn't quench it, all the, the raises and money is not going to quench it, that fish is dying. And he came into the presence of only one of the servants of Allah not the servant of Allah from one of my servants I'm going to send to Sayyidina Musa to learn from. And he's Kalimullah Sayyidina Musa means high, high level and Allah is giving a humbling, I'm going to send to one of my servants. And the trait and the quality, because they say, where's all of this teaching in Qur'an? I'm well, we're telling you but you don't write to understand it. And the people whom quickly want to make comments from thumbnails and what they call thumbnails or clickbait, you show the level of ignorance that you have that you can't even watch it to learn it and then give us an intelligent comment back. Just they look at the two seconds of the beginning, well that's like what children do and they think, oh they have the summary of what this talk is about. No, Allah is defining these characteristics. That these are the people of contemplation, the people of realities and that to slow down and go back now and retrace your steps. He wanted to meet one of Allah's servants whom attained a rahmah and then was taught by Divinely Presence. Not that he studied and then attained Allah's rahmah, means then we write that and that becomes a key that these people of Ilm al Laduni, they're in the schools of rahmah and mercy of how to have good manners. Not in the classes of, of religious dogma and books and, and scholarships without first attaining a rahmah. They're taught by extremely knowledgeable awliyaullah who refine them. But the danger in this world now is you have 19 year old muftis who are extremely hard, they want to cut everybody's head off because they think this is the law, this is the rule, this is it, this is it. But anybody who studies legal books without having first attained the rahmah is a zalim, is, is an oppressor. Because the inappropriate application of laws and misinterpreting phrases and inappropriate translation of words leads to a complete corruption and facade of all Islamic texts because they just, they thought they would learn and as a result of their learning they became hard and you watch their videos like on how they describe things, ribas halam, ribas haram, ribas haram. Then when we try to teach they say, Shaykh you're saying riba's halal? I said, no, I said you're lying about the definition of riba, don't lie about it. Riba is usury, not a prophet. So they're lost on a word, riba is usury, loan sharking, not a profit index. Everybody's allowed to make a profit if there's a liability. So it means they take a word, they lie about it and as a result they grab people to follow that and they rule by fear. Then they create a halal stamp, say if you don't use this stamp your food's not halal. So, oh my goodness you have the counsel from Allah You got a stamp from the heavens? There's many ways to make your food halal and you don't need a stamp for it. So it means that this external difficulty, why we went in that direction is because the external are creating a tremendous amount of difficulty upon the nation and as a result of that difficulty people run from Islam, run from Islam. You make things to be difficult 
and as a result of difficulty what happens? And they move towards shaitan and haram. And the rahmah that Allah is describing with Sayyidina Khidr is one he attained a rahmah. Awliya come and describe, what is the rahmah of Allah It's the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad rahmatan lil alameen. So when he attained a rahmah means what? He attained the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad the lawgiver and the law teacher. And as a result the arwah and the being of that shaykh is in the presence of Prophet dressed by a rahmah and taught the laws, taught the rules from the one whom brought those laws onto this earth. With that hikmah they give guidance. The one who brought the law, he understands the law. He understands وسلم, its implication in these times to avoid hypocrisy. They say, Shaykh, don't put pictures of shaykhs in the house, this is a shirk. Say, but as soon as you turn on your TV and watch that lady on the news, you're in zina. You watch television? You're in zina. So who's in more trouble? The one who lives their life by hypocrisy and they think Allah doesn't know these rules and these laws and the things that people are doing? Or the hikmah of the lawgiver whom inspires to his awliya? That we know all these pictures are everywhere. Look your best to look down, compensated with the faces of awliya. That if you look at the face of a qutub, it's better than looking at Jabal Uhud, in which Prophet described that, look to the Jabal Uhud, it will intercede for you on the day of paradise. And scholars came and described that looking at the faces of a qutub is a higher station than that reality, and we can go even higher in its reality. Because the face of these awliya, they represent wajik al kareem, the face of Allah that can never be seen, that reflects to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of being in that presence, the holy face of Prophet dresses their face. And dresses the seven points on their face. One, two, three, because the tajalli of their mouth is dressed from that. Sami al Basir, Alim al Qadir. So, Sifat al Alim is a light coming from the tongue of Prophet onto their tongue. Based on that attribute from Allah. It's the key is Sayyidina Muhammad Atiullah, Atiya Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum. If Prophet is not reflecting and the ishq and love of Prophet is not there, they're never going to reach that tajalli. Allah is not going to push that away and say, okay, I give it to you anyways. It only flows from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul and from Prophet wa Ulul Amri Minkum. So it means these lights are reflecting upon them, teaching them, inspiring them, guiding them. Alim and Qadr, every breath is through power, through Allah's oceans of power that can't be understood what the power of that breath. Because Allah described, you did your fart, you came through voluntary, I'm not going to be the eyes in which you see. The seeing in which you see, the hearing in which you hear, the breath in which you breathe, the tongue in which you speak, the hands in which you touch, the feet in which you walk, so much so that you become Rabbaniyoon and you have power of kun fayakun, hadith al-Qudsi, that right below the level of Qur'an in its holiness. So means this path of tafakkur is to inherit this way of Sayyidina Khidr 
that seek out those who first attained the rahmah. They attained a presence with Prophet and then to their degree. Some may, awliya may think they're much higher. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. Any position and any nearness to Prophet is enough for anyone in creation. Doesn't matter how near, high, how, how high, how great. If you can just achieve that circle is enough for everything. That's why their uloom and their knowledges is continuously modified for the time, location and proximity of where they are. Because of last days everyone will be following to the Dajjal. As a result they're spreading and sending a lot of rahmah, a lot of mercy. In every contract there is something within that contract that they can use as a rahmah and a mercy to gather people. If you're hard in these days the people will be running to Dajjal. Because he's going to show miracles, he's going to revive the dead through his jinn powers, he's going to bring food where there is no food, he's going to heal where they're all sick. And if all they saw from Islam was hard, 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 no, 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 haram, 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 well then those people must be working for Dajjal. And that's why we said the Wahhabi madhab is for Dajjal, their teaching is for Dajjal, their systems are for Dajjal. It's Hezbu shaitan, they're not Hezbu rahman they have no interest in sending people to paradise, they know they don't know. And many ulama came and had debates and taught and would talk and actually say that, you know we busy ourselves trying to take people to paradise. And we don't understand, why are you so occupied with sending people to hell? The ulama are supposed to be a rahmah and a mercy for people to bring them to paradise, not work for shaitan to send people to hell, make it so hard that you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, okay well then go to hell. And they go follow the shaitan so that their life on this earth will be like a paradise. But the hikmah of awliya from Prophet's heart is, I love this creation, be kind to them, be gentle to them, make their way to be easy. Then gives the hikmah of his usul that no it's actually this, it's actually this. Where we said before they call and they, and they use specific wording, so it's Music is not haram, is that what you're saying shaykh? Do you see the wording? Because they want you to say music is not haram and then you, they want you to counter what Prophet taught. Well they're not foolish. That one who brought the law inspiring within their heart say, teach them and tell them what we're talking about is not music. What we're talking about is hamd and praise. Divine praise is always halal. There's no bidda in ibadah, it's completely lying philosophy. They show videos, you want to recite Fatiha, they come and say, this is forbidden to recite Fatiha here. There's no ibadah that can become a bidda. You cannot bring something new into the deen, but you can pray as much as you want, anytime you want, wherever you want. Nobody can say that 10 extra rakahs on this month is not allowed. This fatiha and this location is not allowed. Reciting of Surah Yasin at the grave is not allowed. These are all lies, all lies from shaitan because he doesn't want the barakah. He doesn't want the blessings of it, he doesn't want the realities of all of these practices to be put upon insan. These are the dangers of this Dajjal system upon the earth. Anyone wants to know is Dajjal here? Yes, he's here, his, his, his government has been firmly established, he's about to present his zuhur and come out. 
and going to come out with a very nice shaykh and talk all about Allah. But he's going to take away Muhammadun Rasulullah and people will go in droves. And everything on this earth will be like a dark night and only muhibin and ashiqeen they're going to shine like stars and there are only a few on a dark night where the sky on how Prophet described his companions that follow any of my companions. Now look what's going to happen between the heaven coming to earth because this is the heavens and Prophet is describing, yes follow any of my companions, they're like stars on this dark night. So the heaven, the kingdom is now coming, what happens? The earth becomes filled with darkness and there's only a few stars. Everyone else is going to give themselves to darkness. So they point out these keys, they're lying in the interpretation of religion and key phrases to entrap and to, to put difficulty upon people. So then Allah is saying, seek out those who have a rahmah, accompany them. And they've been taught ilm al The signs of them is they've been taught heavenly knowledges, their associations are based on heavenly knowledges. If there is no heavenly knowledges, go to the next. And as a result of ilm al its balance and its secret wa hikmati bis salihin and they have to have a hikmah of salihin <clears throat> hikmah of salihin and we described before <clears throat> if you think your association are with salihin what Allah described that Allah described, I am with, I am with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhada wa Salihin. This is the Kaaba and the four corners of the Kaaba. That's what makes the house of Allah your heart. That I am with the Nabi'een and this Nabi'een Sayyidina Muhammad is connected to his Sahabi. Siddiqeen, big Siddiqs. And they're connected and this is why their bayat and their allegiance is connected. They have an allegiance with Prophet Allah says, hold tight to the rope, tafaraq, don't separate. This is the rope that running from the heart of Prophet to the big Siddiqs. And this Siddiqs, their hand is upon this shuhada. Means shuhada, they're Ahlul Basira. So amongst the group, to know that you're in the right group, there have to be Ahlul Basira, Mushahada, that they died in this world with their training and they see what Allah want them to see through their heart. And they're the ones whom produce Salihin. If in the group you're in, there's nobody with Mushahada, the shaykh is not Ahlul Basira, he's not producing Salihin. Because something's broken in the connection because his shaykh should have raised him to be Ahlul Basira. If their rope was true, they would be taking from Prophet taking from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Imam Ali Salam, Naqshbandi is from two doors, two holy companions and as a result all their shaykhs are mushahada, big awliya, big Ahlul Basira, Naqshbandiya's secret is ilm al wa hikmati bi salihin. No swords in your mouth and cheek like Rifai. Their secret is knowledge because they're holding a tremendous rope, so powerful, it's one of the only ropes alive now that connected to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. and it's called the Mahdi Tariqah. Because the, the, the strength of the knowledges and the reality is coming through as a result of Ahlul Basira because now they're the true Kaabas, their associations are trained on producing Salihin. Well, how can you be Salihin if you're not 
training in tafakkur. Hence the book on what? Timeless reality, meditation. That's tafakkur. Contemplate, meditate, slow down, look into your heart, make your connection with the world of light. What Sayyidina Musa missed? Because Sayyidina Khidr wasn't standing there, he was veiled and hidden. He had to look for isharat and signs. Oh, I know that the sign of this one, Muhi al Qulub, he bring the dead to life, he'll bring my heart to a, a different reality in which I can become rushed. I mean, rushed is when you're ripened by the sun. He wanted to be ripened by even a higher power than what he was been ripened by. Rushed means you got riped, you're, you're like you're, the sun has dressed you with his sweetness. He wanted even higher in his reality. Immediately had to stop, go back. Now through tafakkur and contemplation, at that time through his heart he, say, he saw Sayyidina Abbas Qadr and began to accompany the unseen Prophet of Allah that requires good manners and the people of tafakkur. So Sayyidina Khidr was not seen. It's only for him to see through Ahl al-Basira, through his heart. And as a result of no one seeing him that was the difficulty of the test. Everywhere they went, oh, well you did like that, nobody sees you, they're going to think I did this. We have talks on that. But that's the reality of becoming Ahl al-Tafakkur. And that's the gift that Allah wants to give. To be from these people whom will train you and ilm al will be your food, ilm al will be your sustenance and hikmati bi salihin will be your school of manners and training. Because giving knowledge without good manners is corruption because the person will have knowledges and they don't know how to use it. That's like tabliqi jama'ah, that's another one of those crazy groups. Saying things that they don't understand, going on khuruj and making big problems, no hikmah, just 10 things memorized and here we go. And doing dawah to Muslims that don't need dawah. Go out if you're good and bring the people whom don't believe yet. That's where the work is, where thousands come through the tariqah. This broadcast goes out to tens of thousands of people. A thousand people at least have come to the tariqah through these teachings. They're all new and all converted. We don't have to bring one after 10 years and raise their hand and say, oh look, look, alhamdulillah everybody raise your hands. They're coming in, in droves by the teachings. Means that's the reality that Allah wounds for us. Is that train with them, eat from them the ilm al aduni, that has to be your sustenance. Tune in, understand, absorb, write. Alam bil qalam. Allah's promise is, We'll teach you by the pen. So when you write, you're activating a secret. As soon as you write, this pen is activating in your heart, the angels are writing, these knowledge are being bestowed, written on your kitab. As a result of being written on your kitab, your kiram al katibin are continuously now having to change. Because you went from regular person to an elite person. Because now you have Muhammadan haqqaiqs on your book that were not there before. That's why with their tongue they can change your destiny because as soon as they speak, you write it, your destiny completely changed. Plumber all day long plums, goes home, eats, nice man. What's the destiny for that person? Nice man, regular. He turns on, listens to haqqaiqs, all of a sudden starts to have an interest and begin to write some of these kalam. A Muhammadan haqqaiq not to show the importance of the one speaking but the one who's been spoken about is so holy, so immensely 
unimaginably holy, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that you're documenting this, the angels are astonished that these realities are now being written by this person. The immensity of Allah's love for His servant named Sayyidina Muhammad all those realities are now being written on your book. We should make like a sci-fi movie and all of a sudden your book starts to change, the colors start to come out, immense realities are now coming out of you that was just plumbing and home, plumbing and home. Now you have a Muhammadan haqqaiq written on your book? How is that? And then again written, and then again written. And a servant came with all his deeds to Allah and Allah has a scale and nothing moving and all the sins and everything is like heavy, 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 heavy. And the sins of the man as, is, as he's being confronted and questioned in Divinely Presence weighs heavier and heavier and heavier. And then, but Ya Rabbi, I made zikr of Allah. And this Allah said, if we put my name on the scale, what, what weight it has? Nothing of that other side can even be counted with just Ismullah, just the dhikr of Allah has no comparison for that reality. Means the immensity of Allah's rahmah and mercy and love and ishq. Imagine then when these realities dress the kitab. So it means immediately changes the, the reality and the identity of the person. As a result of ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin, then they are enrolled in a way of tafakkur and contemplation. So these people are texting, what is it, uh, meditation in Islam? Don't get lost in words. This is about tafakkur, this is about pursuit of rahmah and mercy, this is about ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin in which Allah wound to dress the servant with His greatest gift. The one whom we granted, ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin, we have granted him the greatest gift. The, Allah is saying, we granted the greatest gift because we don't understand the value of that reality upon the eternal soul and what rank that makes the soul in Divinely Presence. The pursuit of Divinely knowledges, when the servant takes a path toward Divinely knowledges, they say, there's nothing from the heavens and the sky that are not praising that servant. Not from its fishes, its animals, its creatures, winged creatures, hoofed creatures, creatures within the water that are not praising upon that servant that's seeking Divine realities of the Creator of Allah Lord Most High. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and give us a deeper understanding of tafakkur and contemplation and the immense ocean that it opens of realities within the heart and soul. And that to be protected from the deception of shaitan and the deception of the dajjal system that is moving very fast and, and opening left and right and, and people to be deceived by these difficulties. We pray that Allah safeguard our eyes, our ears, our breath, our mouth, our hands, our feet, our heart and our entire being. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.